The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. everybody, CammieBaker.com here, queen of the Happiness Jungle today with the Happiness Jungle TV show, and I'm super excited to be with my powerful lady boss friends. You know, being an entrepreneur and being a business owner, it is so important, especially I, I call it while, uh, going around on our entrepreneurship. You know, I feel like we're sailing on an entrepreneur ship, and sometimes that can be very lonely. And so we have to get together sometimes and be social. So I wanted to introduce my friend Dawn Pease. And Leanne, I'm going to let you tell, tell us your own last name because I always mess it up, and I don't want to mess I messed up my last guest, guest, can't even say it, guest last name. So introduce yourself, ladies, and, and just tell them just a little bit about you. Dawn, we'll start with you because I met you first. Yeah. My name is Dawn Pease, and I'm the owner of Dawn Sign Tech in North Andover, Massachusetts. So I'm a sign company. We go right from design to permitting to installation, uh, refurbishing, and repairing. So anything that's a sign need, we got it covered. That sounds like a really male-dominated industry. Used to be. Used to be. <laughs> Used to be until Dawn. Until Dawn got a hold of it. Until Dawn got a hold of it. And Miss Leanne? So I'm Leanne Shapiro-Govart and I operate thepartyaccommodator.com, and we do event planning, wait staff, bar staff, corporate gigs, um, maybe just Easter dinner, we come over and we send waitresses and bartenders to pick up where you can become the host and you can just go relax and have a cup of tea, have a drink, and we take care of all the details to the party. So what's your tagline? You relax and host, we do the most. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be fascinated to hear more about how you staff that and run it and keep up with. As a matter of fact, I'll just ask you now. Always hiring. <laughs> always hiring. Always hiring. So, so Don and I met because out networking, mm -hmm. I met a gentleman out networking, and he said, you need to meet Don. <laughs> he said, Don is the best networker and the best connector out there. So he invites me to a party, <laughs> and I go to Don's party at her sign shop, which is an impressive big venue. And... Um, it's Dawn's birthday. Dawn had a couple cocktails that night. <laughs> she was very friendly and very sweet, but very um, not focused on the conversation. But I gave her my book, and I'll be darned if she didn't actually read the damn thing <laughs> and consumed it and devoured it. And we got on the phone and spent two hours just yakking it up and realized we had a lot in common. So, Dawn, share with us a little bit about how you got started as an entrepreneur and just got started on this journey. Um. Well, I, I've been doing what I do for 25 years, working for other sign companies, working for other people. When I said that it used to be male dominated, it was actually a female that trained me. Mm. So I went through the apprenticeship, the very old school way. I had to start at the bottom and work my way up. Um, and then when I moved here, it made sense to do what I know how to do. And it's very hard to find people trained in our trade. So getting a job is usually pretty easy. And so I went to work for another local sign company. and. Uh, my boss was ill. He'd come down with Lyme disease, and so I ended up running the business for him while he went about the business of trying to get better. Um, and once he got better, he really didn't want to do it anymore. And um, it just made everything uncomfortable. You know when your boss isn't enjoying himself anymore, and it makes everybody else unhappy too. And so my family had approached me and said, you know, you've been running other people's sign companies for 25 years. Maybe you, it's time to, to run your own. Mm. And I thought to myself, oh, God, do I want that responsibility? And I said, oh, what the hell? Let's, let's give it a shot. You know, and to me, from the first day, it was almost like playing house. It's like, I can't believe I'm ordering this equipment. I can't believe I'm bringing in these sales. I can't believe I'm hiring the staff. I can't believe the jobs that I'm getting. And what I do, we don't do the same thing for more than five minutes at a time every single day. So it's never dull. It's never boring. It's never repetitive. There's a challenge in almost everything we do because there's always the potential for things to go wrong. Um, so my forte is logistics. What mm -hmm. I like to do is to solve problems. 
And so I leave it to my staff to do the designing and to do the fabricating while I look after the logistics of getting things done. So here we are seven years later, and I'm still having the time of my life. Every morning I still wake up and look forward to going to work and waiting to see what's going to happen today. So you take care of the logistics, and you also take care of the lead generation, the business development, which is why the guy that I met said, hey, you got to meet Dawn because she's the woman. She, I mean, that event that I went to that night, there was 100 people crawling all over that place. It was, yeah. it was, it was quite the party. That's become an annual event now. It started out because um, I'm president of the North Andover Merchants Association, and we try to host monthly mixers. Nobody wanted to do February because it's cold and you've got the kids break, so timing is odd. And I just said, oh, I'll do it. Um, and the week that they picked for me to do it happened to be the week of my birthday. And uh, because I'm a business-to-business -business company, um, I deal with other business owners. We all reach out to one another. We all know what each other needs. We know what each other does and how to refer one another. And so, you know, to promote it, I sent out invitations to all my suppliers, to all of my customers. So we went from a party that normally would have had 15 people to a party that had 60. Um, and so that's why it's become this thing that everybody looks forward to every year because I have the biggest mixer, because I have the biggest network. <clears throat> and so, you know, everybody's asking, Dawn, when's your party this year? <laughs> <laughs> and so you happened to make it to my 50th birthday party that ended up being combined with it. And yeah, it was a, it was a huge success. Nice. Well, and I'm glad that I went, too, and I'm glad I put my book in your hand, and I'm glad that you read it, and I'm glad that we became friends. And then, through another party you had, I started playing with Leanne. Yes. <laughs> we did, and it is like play when we get together. It's great because we're all business owners. We all kind of have the same trials and tribulations. Maybe there's different translation of how the... Uh, Problems, I shouldn't call them problems, but different situations arise. Opportunities to Opportunities, grow. Opportunities, thank you. <laughs> so we're able to kind of bounce things off of each other, and that is the same all around, and we help. We help each other. Well, and, and besides, just being with other business-minded people and talking about marketing and strategy and who can you introduce me to, just all that stuff. You know, it's like when I'm doing my, yes, the online dating. Mm. I keep talking about it. One day I'm going to look back at these filmings in a few years and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I mentioned that. But, you know, I can't even date an employee mindset person. It's just a different conversation that's so, that's so hard. And so we get together and we can brainstorm and things like that. So how did you get started being a business owner? Gee, years ago, I started doing party accommodator on the side. I didn't even know it was party accommodator. Um, I started at 14 in this industry. Um, and I always waitressed, bus tables, bartended all the way through high school to college. And I was doing it on the side, and I was trying to fit into the status quo of, you know, what, how my parents raised me. You go and you work corporate, and you collect your benefits, and, you know, wait, you wait for your paycheck, and you do what the boss says. Never fit in for me. I can't tell you how many jobs I've been through. Mm. But they say, if, you know, if you're not failing, you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. So I failed, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, um, went through several jobs, always did this on the side, worked at a couple companies, always helped a couple, had a couple of bar shifts, a couple of waitress shifts. And I started to um, establish a clientele. And before I knew it, it was a business. And um, recently uh, got the, should I say, title of single or single mom, whatever, um, and decided I'm going to stick both feet in. I'm only going to do this. This is what I love. It brings in money. Um, I can do it when I want, how I want, and it's my business. And I started to feel more powerful. You know, I'm seeing a theme here between the two of you and myself because over the years, there have been different industries that I've been in, the bar and restaurant industry mm -hmm. that I waitressed and bartended and shot girl and all that stuff, and <laughs> then ended up owning my own bar. And then there was a point where I worked for another real estate agent uh, as his assistant as an employee with a J-O-B, and it wasn't very long of being his assistant where I became a real estate agent myself, created my own business and did my own thing, and then I did the same thing in network marketing. It's a little bit different, but I followed a successful person and became very successful. So what I'm hearing is, so the, the theme is either A, whatever job you have, you can create your own business out Absolutely. of, or if there's a business that you're really thinking about, hey, I'd really like to, I'd really like to have this for a business, then get a job in that industry and learn it learn from it. the bottom up. Any input on that? Absolutely. I think that's the best way. And I think if it, so many people I know, even like recently I've had conversations, well, how would I get out? I mean, I need that paycheck. I'm like, you transition yourself. 
you go and take on a job that you love doing, even if it's part time or maybe one night uh, during the week or on the weekend, and you suck in that information and you kind of wean yourself off, as they say. And before you know it, <laughs> you're in business. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, the good thing about owning my own business is. You know, I'm the boss, and the bad thing is I'm the boss. Like, it's my own business is the good thing, but it's my own business is the bad thing. But it is good at the end of the day. You write your own check. Oh, and, and you make your own schedule. Make your own schedule. Which is a, which is a good thing, and it's a bad thing. Yeah. You know, I was speaking As with, a mom, it's huge. Yeah, I was speaking with a friend of mine the other day who's an employee, and he said, I just don't know how you do it. He said, I don't know how you <laughs> go through the day not knowing what you're going to do next, you know, and everything that you do, you schedule for yourself. It just it hurt his head to even think about it. So when you were saying that you were thinking, oh, gosh, do I want to take this risk? Do yeah. I want to take the risk of getting into business? For me personally, the, the risk would be, wow, could I be an employee? I don't, I'm, not, I'm totally unemployable. Yeah, I wasn't thinking so much along the lines of risk as responsibility. Mm. You know, Absolutely. now this is all laying on me. I can't just say to my boss, well, you have to fix this. Mm. Now I'm the boss, mm. I have to fix it. You know, I can't say to somebody else, what do you want me to do to fix it? I have to make that decision now. But you know what? That's the mindset, and that's the conversation, and that's why we have these different kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. Because as the owner of the company, of, of the business, uh, even if you're a solo entrepreneur or a company like yours with a lot mm -hmm. of employees, you are problem solving in the moment. It's mm -hmm. just a, it's you're you're working your muscle every day. You have yes. to think out of the box. You can't think mainstream. You have to always come up with a creative idea. Yeah. Well, that's that's why that's my job in it. You know. Um, I can do the fabrication, I can do the, the design, I can do all of those things, but that's not what I'm needed to do. And that's what my staff quite frequently, I see them get busy and you can see this, the tension levels rising and I say, okay, stop, breathe. What do you need done? It is now my priority. Tell me what you need. And it's so funny because they'll always say, no, no, Don, we need you running the business. And it's like, but no, you're losing your mind right now. You need some of the stress lifted. Let me do it. You know, I can stop what I'm doing for an hour if it'll make your job easier mm -hmm. you know and so they do but as soon as I'm done they're like okay go back out and run the business go out there well, we empower our employees which yeah. is huge and having always had bosses in the past when I became a boss I didn't want to be that boss that was like everybody saw coming okay I look busy you know I want people to enjoy what they do yeah and I want to kind of reward them by empowering them and giving them the information they need so they can grow and learn a new task yeah. and then it a, I don't have to be there anymore to babysit, and B, they learn something. It's great, and now they feel, they feel good, and they want to stay with me. They want to work with me. They want to learn. Yeah. I tell you, when I when I went from being business owner, when I owned my own bar in Florida, and then I moved from Florida to New Hampshire when my daughter was one year old, I had I think fourteen jobs. My first year, sure. I remember the accountant that I was using at the time saying, "This must be a record amount of W twos," <laughs> and uh, and I said, I said. You don't even know how many places paid me under the table. Under the table. And didn't, give me, <laughs> exactly. didn't give me a W two. But to your, you know, I, I went from being a business owner to back to employee for a little while, and I was like, I would never treat my employees this oh way, and I'd storm out. You know, it's it's difficult to go back the other way. Can you imagine going and working for another sign shop at this point? Only one, <laughs> the one who trained me. I think I could go back there, but uh, from what I have seen in other signs no couldn't do it mm -mm. but I, I can't deal with the unbending yeah, yeah. I, exactly and you know I love that as a lady boss you'll still get back out there in the trenches and help the the people and mm -hmm. that are that are in the trenches and, and doing the hard work and so you know we we also want it's like the book um, the e-myth you know oh. in the e-myth somebody's a great pie maker and everybody says <laughs> boy you make the best damn pie you need to have a pie shop but then she mm -hmm. opens this pie shop and she realizes, well, she's not a good manager, and she doesn't know how to order stuff, and she doesn't know how to negotiate contracts, and she doesn't know how to hire and fire and all that. So you wear every hat, and it sounds like you've worn every hat, too. Mm. Absolutely. I think the day I decided I don't want to work for anybody else, and I let go of all the other side jobs and just stuck both feet in, I had a job, part-time, whatever, and they said, you can't take Mother's Day off, or you can't take, no, we can't, we don't have enough people, you have to come in. And I'm thinking, they own me. Mm. They, I don't want to be owned, mm -hmm. and I don't do that to my staff either. If they have something that they have to do, I'll, I'll find somebody else. And they always, they're afraid that they're going to lose that little job, that little money. And I'm like, no, we'll we'll make it work. You go do what you need to do. Mm. You know, you want to work to live, not live to work, as they always say. Mm. There's the other end of that though too, and that is when you own it, you're responsible for it. So if you have set a deadline and your customer needs it met. 
if that means working till 11 o'clock at night, by God, you're going to be working yes. till 11 o'clock at night because that's your name and your reputation on the line. Either that or you're going to pay your st staff time and a half to do it. What is the saying? <clears throat> Entrepreneurs are the only people that will work 120 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's it. on the money. And see, isn't that interesting? You guys money. are like, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And you just light up. You're like, yep, I would do that. Me too. You know, I'd, I, would, I would rather work 100 I just all the time than to have to work for someone. I'd rather work building my dream. You oh, know? write your own check. Yeah. And now, Dawn, I know that you read a lot of books, and I'm going to get back to you in a minute. Think mm -hmm. about a couple of books that you'd really recommend. Leanne, what do you do to, 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 to keep you inspired and moving forward? Or Today's a perfect example. I meet people all the time, and I'm not, like, sucking information out of them, but I'm equally sharing with them. But every new person I meet has something new that I've never heard of or never looked at it that way. They look at things differently and I love that and I, even women that are in the same business as me and when you're good at what you do there is no competition because I'm not everybody's cup of tea thank and you yeah <laughs> it's it's to me you learn it's a learning and I kind of like it when I meet somebody in the same doing the same thing mm -hmm. because now how do you do it oh you know what do you do when this happens and it's great yeah I, I love that you said that there is no competition I, I work diligently on not using that word competition because the fact of the matter is nobody is going to do even real estate agents, if you had hmm. 10 real estate agents, if you really talk to all of them, they're, they're, none of them do it the same way. They're not going to market so the same way. They're not going to handle their clients the same way. They're not going to ne negotiate the same way. You know, we all have such a different background. So thank you for bringing that up. There is no competition. Yeah. Only collaboration. collaboration. We only collaborate. Dawn. I tell people that all the time. Somebody will say to me, well, who's your competition? I say, I don't have any. Mm -mm. Nobody does things the way I do. Nobody runs my trade, let's call it, the way I do. Um, I, it's a very old trade. A lot of people don't realize that sign making, sign writing is a trade. <clears throat> it's no different than a plumber or a carpenter. As a matter of fact, we have to do a lot of what plumbers, carpenters, and electricians do. Mm. We have um, to climb ladders. We climb ladders. We <laughs> run wires. And work wire. yeah. <laughs> We have to figure out how to make things fasten and be safe. But um, I do something a little different in that I'm not an artist. Most sign shops are owned by artists. I employ artists. I like running a business. Just like in the e-myth, you know, if I had to do all of it, I would very soon not like what I do. Mm. Um, and so I employ people to do what they like to do while I can do what I want to do. Um, so I know for a fact nobody does things the way I do it. I'll do the permits. If the customer doesn't want to do it, if they want to do it, I'll show them how. Uh, it's all about service. I want to return a call immediately. Mm -hmm. um, I want to give them answers immediately, and if they know that their sign is taking four to six weeks to fabricate, I'm in contact with them every week, mm -hmm. showing them pictures of the different stages of their signs and where we're at. Um, so, and I think most business owners and most good business owners should see it that way as well. I work with Absolutely. other sign shops. I need somebody who has a 50-foot crane. Well, I don't have one, but I know a guy who does have one. Right. If he gets a job that he considers too small for his 500 employee shop, he'll send it to me. Right. Where by the same token, if somebody wants a small sign to hang at their end of the driveway that says, welcome to our home, I'm going to send them to a hobbyist that I know because they're not going to want to pay a commercial sign shop to make a little sign. You know, so we, we all have a community and we respect one another and maybe we're in competition with each other There's once in a while, niches, but we don't, we, don't, we don't think of it that way. Well, uh, and I love how you would answer that. Well, who's your competition? Oh, I don't have competition. Mm -hmm. There's such posture. There's such presence. There's such positioning that I don't, I don't have any. I mean, that makes me want to hire you, and I don't even need a sign. <laughs> like, I don't even need a sign. Thank God I'm, I'm not brick and mortar anymore. And mm -hmm. I, praise God, I hope I never am brick and mortar again. Um, but uh, it, it makes me want to hire you. Well, Absolutely. She has, she has no competition. Yeah. Well, I want her to do whatever it is she does then, you know? I once had a customer ask me, he says, you know, your guy came out, and he gave me the quote, and he says, well, I got a quote from another sign company, and it's lower. You want to explain to me why I should go with you instead of them? And I said, oh, that one's easy. He said, why? I said, because I'm cuter. <laughs> <laughs> and he started laughing, and he really said, said like for all you know, I'm cute, too. I said, I never doubted it for an instant. He's been a client of mine for seven years. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, when I was in real estate, I, uh, I, I was with Century 21 at the time, and I was, I was in this town, I, my, the town that my main office was over here, and they had a really close Century 21 office, and the, the seller said, well, Century 21 is right down the road. Why would, I, I? Why would I work with your office? I said, because... My office has me. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Absolutely. And yeah, it, love and, it. And in real estate, it's... I'm not it's, them, they're not me. It's not the company, it's the individual agent. Well, yeah. It does not matter if it's the what logo it is, it's it's who's yeah. representing you, and it's the same thing for you. It doesn't really matter, the the logo or the franchise, it's, it's who's actually doing the work. Yeah. yeah, and people like the confidence. They know when you're confident like that, wow, she must know her stuff. Like, she didn't even hesitate. Exactly. So much, so much to be said for confidence, and you exude it. Leanne. Thank you. I try. <laughs> I've never been on TV before, so I'm a little paranoid. But you know. no, you're doing awesome. <laughs> Maybe and, once. And you're so great with people, and you're so great out in the public. And so, talk to us a little bit about oh, yeah. how how event planning. Like, I'm sure you get really stupid questions, like, "Well, why would I pay you to throw a party? I've thrown a party before." <laughs> like, well, if you want to run around and you want to do all the shopping and you want to do all the cooking and take a week or two off, like, to cook for your wedding. That's your pop, you know, you can just hire us at the end or however you want to do it. We'll fill in all the pieces or we'll just, you know, give you servers, give you a bartender, any piece of the event. Even if they just want entertainment, I've got people. If they want tables and chairs, rentals, I've got people. Um, my thing is, how can you enjoy your event if you're doing all the pieces to it? Then that day you're running around, you're getting ice, you're making drinks, you're taking coats. You're not enjoying the party. It, before you know it, party's over, you spent thousands of dollars, you don't remember a minute of it, you didn't get to see anybody, you didn't get to interact like mm -hmm. we are today. Mm -hmm. This is huge that I can just sit here with you all and talk and exchange, you know, stories and information. So you actually help people to, uh, to, to, to create memories? Absolutely. We're, we're, yeah, absolutely. I would say so. Now, who is your perfect clientele? You know, we're 98% referrals, much like you are at this yeah. point. I don't even advertise. I've been doing this for 33 years. Got my degree in hotel restaurant management in, I hate to say it, but like 87. So it's been a long time I've been doing this. Um, <laughs> Dawn. Um, but long story short, you know, anybody can be my client. It could be corporate. It could be, I meet people all the time. And my, my daughter <laughs> gets really embarrassed. She's like, Mom, you're like shameless. You're always passionate. Here you go, PartyCombinator.com. You know, <laughs> always plugging yourself. I said, honey, it's how you get it done. It's how I buy the clothes you wear. I was going to say. How I took us on vacation. She may say that to you, but when she wants the credit card to come out, she's okay with that, too. Yeah. When you want to turn the heat on in the house, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. How's that happening? <laughs> Anyhow. <you're> hungry. <laughs> I can tell you who my favorite clients of hers are when she de when she hosts it, when she works at a networking event i love going to the networking events knowing that leanne's looked after it i know what the food's going to be the drink i know that there's no fussing or climbing over people to get at things those are my favorites now i know they're not necessarily hers but they're mine That's i love going to networking events where she's working it <laughs> nice so where she's actually hosting or, or or she's running it so that the person hosting it can wander and not have to worry about it nice and Not I've like I her. was that night. And I've used you as well with, for my clients who all of a sudden they had a grand opening. We are doing the grand opening with the bar and the food and everything. And they needed a sign to go up like fast. And the people that they were going to use like weren't even getting back to them. Weren't even, like you said, I always call people right back, as do I, within yeah. 24 hours or even sooner. Yeah. And a lot of people won't even call you back now. It's like, are you really that good? Because when the market crashes, you know who they're calling? Us. They're well, not calling those people. As a matter of fact, when we have the guest of the Happiness Jungle TV show guest appreciation in three weeks that you ladies are going to be at, yep. uh, Lindy Eldridge, the, the, the founder of this show, she says, well, I'll be at the door making sure, because this is invite only, it's only, you know, she says, I'll be at the door making sure. I said, Lindy, you're the creator of the Happiness Jungle TV show. You're not going to stand at the door. No. You're going to be, you know, schmoozing around. We'll I'll have, bring one of my girls. Yeah. Check everybody in. Well, actually, you sh you should and you could, and we shall, <laughs> and and that would be great for you for PR too. You know, make sure that everybody that comes in, she, when she greets them, she can say, you know, I'm part of such and such business, and you know, give them a flyer or whatever it is you want to do, and uh, it'd be as great. As much as we can all get in front of people, that's all that matters. But I, like I said, I think one of the themes of today, like you were saying, is women bosses. So Don and I, real quick, uh, um, just to jump in, we were talking about what are our biggest challenges as female bosses mm -hmm. and we were kind of throwing that around and we were talking about you know the level of respect for men versus women it's mm -hmm. a very different translation of how we relate to our staff as mm -hmm. opposed to how most men do not all sometimes it's not of a it's more than a, of an expectation of the employees not so much what we do right. it's what the people that we employ what they expect you know, they're used to their mothers being very nurturing and accommodating, mm. you know, and that their father's being very hard line and being the disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we've, we've found issues where uh, because we're females, we're expected to be softer and easier to take advantage of. And the lines are blurred. 
Yeah. And we well, have to. And on the flip side of that, I know for me, I've spent so many, many years, decades, <laughs> um, feeling wearing the pants, like mm -hmm. literally feeling yes. like I have to be the man and manifest and make it happen. And you know, now that I'm been around the the planet, the sun, a few more times, I'm, I'm wanting to be more feminine. I'm wanting to be more in the receiving mode, and mm -hmm. you know, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. It's challenging to put the sword down yeah, and to, to stop uh, having the male role. Would you yeah. agree? But people, I think, after a while, they get to know you and your abilities because I, they do judge women differently. Oh, can she handle that? Like, she's a woman. How can she do signs? She's going to climb that ladder. How's she going to get that electricity hooked up? She is. <laughs> she's just as good as any man out there. She's great. Or if she can't, if she can't reach it because, you know, she's not the tallest girl I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> she will hire somebody to go and do that for her, but right. she will get it done. Yeah. Um, there's that. And then there's the other part of it we were talking about. And sometimes we get hired by men or women and you have to interact with them and they don't see you as a power force or, or qualified or they just are judging because you're a female and they're male. I had a guy walk into the bar that I owned. I was 23 to 30 years old. So somewhere in that time frame, now I, I've got on my Daisy Duke shorts and I've got on my little tan. It's a, it's a beach bar. We've it's a all been bar. there. We've all worked there. But, yeah. I, but I own the place. And this guy walks in. He says, hey, I want to talk to the owner. I said, you're looking at her. He says, no, go get your husband or your daddy or whoever it is. I said, uh -uh. Oh. no, you did not. <laughs> no, you you did walked not. in here to sell something and you insult the owner. Get out of my are. It's amazing, but that mindset is is definitely there. So we've got about a minute left of the show, and we want to leave people inspired. What's a couple of books that you'd recommend, Don? I know you're the reader. Well, I definitely love the E Myth and the E Myth Revisited um, because it is that eye-opening experience. To it ain't all fun and games. You've got to figure out what your priority is, um, what your employees' important priorities are going to be. And I got to tell you. Not to suck up, I really did enjoy your book. I really well, thank liked. Thank you. I was going to ask. Yeah, I really <laughs> liked the you know make your mindset. That's what it's going to be. If you're going to tell yourself, oh, I got to go networking, but hey, I'm going to go out and play. Go you want to come? <laughs> We're playing today. Yeah. <laughs> That works. That, that, I think, for new entrepreneurs is really, really important. Probably one of the most important things that they have to do. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Mindset. And Leanne? I completely agree. I would say that um, you want to use everybody around you, not use, but utilize each other. You know, we're all human beings. We've all had experiences, but it's so great when you're a business owner to talk to other people. That is your biggest knowledge is key. And it's, it's priceless when we all exchange with each other and help each other. And to be with people that are playing in the same sandbox supporting supporting so kamiebaker.com here with the happiness jungle tv show super excited to be playing today <laughs> with my lady boss friends take care The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.